Back in the 80s, Toyota had a bitchin' minimal business jingle that went something along the lines of, Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. And everybody on screen bounced in merriment. This wasn't only for one particular promotion, either, however a running effort over each medium comprehensible, a peculiar relevance to the Reagan period, completely clad in mother pants and CFC filled hairspray. It was the beginning of satellite TV and wherever you went, its warm shine appeared to pervade homes with pictures of Bob Ross painting glad trees, Mighty Max morning kids shows, and pitches for a progressive gaming item from some organization out of Japan called Nintendo. At the time, a war for Japanese authenticity inside the American car segment had transformed into an all-out firefight, and an evident 80s form purchasers were being offered some extremely odd poop. While Nissan was openly separating itself from the old Datsun nameplate and Honda was caught up with creating fuel-infused CRXs, Toyota had been building turn-offs of the Mark II passenger auto. One of these branches was named the Cressida, a more lavish interpretation of the Camry that at last didn't offer worth squat because of cannibalization by the Lexus Mark and, at last, the Camry itself. Simply envision a somewhat swankier rectangularly restyled Camry and you essentially have a Cressida. Indeed, we likewise had spin-offs like the Cresta, however I diverge, not every person needs to review a station wagon that appeared as though it had been shagged by a damn ash square. Impetus of the Cressida is the place things get intriguing, however, for I utilized a similar straight-six motor and back-wheel drive setup out of the Toyota Supra, something that shockingly even came standard in US models. Another progressive move for the time was the way that all adaptations of the Cressida came standard with AC, something that was relatively incredible at the time. Mab da Vincenzo, otherwise known as Curly, was absent to this reality only a unimportant two years back, and truth be told, he didn't generally care at all, either. He had recently moved to Chicago and keeping in mind that working at Eleven's Paint and Fiber in Arizona, the tingle to manufacture the perfect road machine had him all of a sudden toying with the idea of purchasing a Cyan FRS. One day, while at the place of Dan Lynch from Haymaker Industries, the person behind the SR20 controlled Corale highlighted in Volume 20, Issue 5, a 1JZ furnished Cressida with a chaser front end got Curly's attention. In any case, what began as transaction once again the acquiring of the auto's AVS6 events transformed into the offer of the whole skeleton, and inside no time, Curly was the proprietor of one of the principal Jay-Z swapped Crestas in America. Swapped ages prior by one of the makers of Jay-Z-X project, the square-shaped little mammoth had seen different proprietors and its inside had turned out to be ratty as all damnation. Luckily, Dan from Haymaker had procured the auto completely rewired, finished with a major single scroller, umbrains, a future complex, and whatever remains of the standard suspects. When Curly took responsibility for a vehicle, he drove it straight to the shop and began stripping his Toyota down for bodywork. The arrangement was to transform the auto into a blender, a stock body manufacturer sitting on 17-inch amalgams, with simply enough lift to make running errands charming. In any case, Curly soon saw the auto required new control arms and a pack of little knickknacks were absent or broken. Despite the fact that this doubtlessly was baffling, it was the acknowledgement one portentous day that since 18s wouldn't fit on the auto, the time had come to push this work over the edge. There was no real way to influence the bumpers to fit, and the thought of building a basic road auto was all of a sudden tossed out the window. Wavy authoritatively went bananas, and with protruding serial 9 front bumpers introduced on the auto, he was certain he was going the correct way. Wheel fitment issues kept on plaguing the fabricate, so Curly obtained completely custom 80 millimeters over bumpers and finagle chaser corner lights into them. Amid this time, Curly was pulling to fold obligation at the shop, delivering back Zaz bumpers with a specific end goal to help balance the cost of everything while at the same time working all day, and upsetting time without a doubt. Throughout the following two years, the Cressida experienced a few stages, and when paint became possibly the most important factor, sweet blue had surfaced. When the auto left the stall, there was an issue. Wavy loathed the shading. 
so he quickly brought to sanding the auto down for the millionth time, sold the wheels it was shaking, and got his collaborators at Eleven's to respray the whole auto a house of color color of liquor wine. Tossing on an arrangement of 18-inch Gramlites 57FXX to complete things off, the auto had at long last formed into the meaning of the perfect road mammoth. Lo, uproarious, and as yet shaking a completely useful stock AC setup, it was the start of another experience for both proprietor and turbocharged creature alike. By and large, this Cressida has been a day-by-day -day driver, a show auto, a road float auto, and an enormous cash and vitality pit, with a lot of satisfaction to oblige all that anguish. It's never simple changing a suspension no one cherishes or thinks about, and for this fabricate the greatest test was finding a manner by which to fit an arrangement of monstrous, super low balance wheels underneath its hind quarters. The way the front end had been set up totally discredited the Serial 9 bumper's capacity to glass the rollers. Since nobody else makes front bumpers for this star Toyota, a considerable measure of experimentation was important to get both fitment and freedom on point. Additionally, in light of the fact that Cressida to chaser change bumpers are about as uncommon as a lorry's prime rib supper, many hours must be spent making sense of how to actually make every one of the pieces fit. In any case, fit they did, and Curly was satisfied as punch with the result. For this aficionado, the manner by which the greater part of the hues attach into each other is no ifs ands or buts its most grounded property. Look carefully and you'll see the blue of the motor straight matches the roof dot, and also highlights along parts of the air. Touches like these get him inevitably, and regardless of looking more show than go, Curly reveals to us this car still spools harder than an intoxicated sleeping beauty at a sewing party. Possibly Toyota ought to bring back the jingle all things considered, in light of the fact that damn it if this Cressida doesn't shout goodness, what an inclination, 